The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to activate and begin using Discover 508 for SharePoint 2010. The use cases demonstrated in this video include, but are not limited to some of the core collaborative capabilities that Discover 508 offers to visually impaired SharePoint users. I will start out by navigating to a SharePoint 2010 team site. On the home page, there are several common SharePoint features, including a top and left-hand navigation, wiki content, as well as several web parts displaying views from different SharePoint lists and libraries. By pressing the tab key once, a link becomes available with the text Discover 508 Usability Mode. By pressing Enter to activate the link, I am automatically redirected to Discover 508 Usability Mode. This preference is stored into my user profile so that the next time I visit a SharePoint site, the browser will automatically load my preferred SharePoint mode. In Discover 508 Usability Mode, I am provided with the same content that was displayed in the out-of-the-box team site, but now the content is rendered in a consistent, easily navigable format that makes all of the collaborative functions of SharePoint available and accessible for all users. The first links on the page will allow me to skip directly to the main page content or to turn off Discover 508 Usability Mode to return to out-of-the-box view of SharePoint 2010. The next sections of the page are split up into sections labeled by appropriate H1, H2, and H3 headings. JAWS users can use the H key to quickly jump between these sections. All links and buttons are highlighted to provide visual cue of which link is currently active. In order to provide a consistent and usable experience, the first section of the page will always be the navigation section. The section provides the user with breadcrumb navigation that indicates where the user is within the SharePoint site hierarchy. When the user is on the home page of the site, it also provides a user-friendly top navigation and quick launch section that are standard in SharePoint 2010. Following the navigation, the next section is the page content, which will render the appropriate information depending on which page you are on. On a web part page, this content will include wiki content and web parts. In a list or library page, the list of items or documents will dis be displayed in the page content section. On this particular site, the page content section includes the wiki content, a web part for a document library, and a web part for a calendar. In Discover 508 Usability Mode, web parts are re represented as lists with links to different documents or items rather than tables. Now that we've covered the basic layout of Discover 508, let's walk through browsing a document library and then uploading a document to that library. I'll start by tabbing to the navigation section of the page until I find the document library I'm looking for. In this case, we will browse to the Shared Documents library that is standard on SharePoint 2010 team sites. By tabbing into the navigation section, I will locate the link for Shared Documents and activate it by clicking or pressing Enter on the keyboard. I am now on the Shared Documents page. This page is very similar to the home page, so I can easily browse using consistent headings that I know from the first page that I was on. By clicking Skip to Main Content, I am able to quickly begin browsing the documents and folders in this library. If there are other views in this library, I can change to those as well. By clicking any document link, I can open that document and begin reading it. There is always a Document Details link next to each document that allows me to browse the metadata or actions on a particular document. On all pages in Discover 508 for SharePoint 2010, there will be an action section, which provides me with several links to actions related to the page I'm on. In this case, I want to upload a document. So I'll navigate to the actions heading and then select the upload a document link. You'll notice that on the upload a document page, the form is very simple and easy to follow. There are instructions telling me how to proceed, 
and there are no extra links or content on the page. By activating the Browse button, I can navigate to a location on my computer for a document that I want to upload. Once I've selected a document, I will click the Upload button. I am now taken to a page where I will fill out all of the required and optional metadata for the document library. Once I've filled out the required information, I will activate the Submit button in order to save my changes. At this point, I am provided with a success message, which allows me to know that the document was successfully uploaded, along with a link to go back to the details for the newly uploaded document. Discover 508 will always provide users with an applicable success and error message page so that the user will always know if the action they took worked or a reason why it did not work. Now that I've successfully uploaded a document, I am now on the document details page for the newly uploaded document. This is a good time to explain some of the actions we can take on a document. First of all, on the document details page, I am able to view all of the metadata for the document, including who created the document and when it was last modified. I will also be provided with a version history of all the versions of the particular document. Now let's look at the actions. All actions in Discover 508 are security trimmed the same way they are in out-of-the-box SharePoint, which means the actions a user has access to might be different depending on their permissions. In this case, I'm logged in as a full control user, so I have the option to perform the following actions on this document. Edit, check out, add alert, send to other location, delete item, and manage permissions. Next, I will demonstrate how to check in and check out a document in SharePoint. I will begin by navigating to the Actions section just like I did when I wanted to upload a document. I will locate the Check Out link and then activate it by pressing Enter. Now, I am presented with a simple form which allows me to confirm that I do want to check out the document. By pressing the OK button, the document becomes checked out to me, and I can click the link to return back to the document details. Because the document is now checked out to me, I have exclusive control over the document and all of its metadata until I check it back in. I can check it back in by selecting Check In under Actions. I am once again presented with the simple confirmation page. By pressing the OK button, the document is checked in and I now have a success message telling me that the check-in was successful. By clicking the link, I can return to the document. Now that I've walked through how easy it is to navigate, browse a document library, upload a new document, view its properties, check it out, and check it back in, I'll demonstrate how to view and add calendar events in SharePoint. By clicking Home in the Breadcrumb Navigation section, I am returned to the home page of the current site collection. By navigating to the Quick Launch, or to the web part we discussed earlier, I can easily view calendar events in SharePoint. In this case, I'll skip the navigation and go directly to the calendar by clicking the title of the calendar web part. By activating the link, I am taken to a view of the calendar and all of the events listed in the default view. I can change views if I want to, or I can view the existing events and their dates. In order to create a new event, I will locate the Actions section of the page and click New Event. Similar to the Upload Document form, I am presented with a very easy to use, simple form that allows me to submit a new event to the calendar. I'll fill out all of the relevant information now. After clicking Submit, the new event is created and I am taken to a page with a success message which tells me that the event has been created successfully. Following the link on that page, I am able to go back to the calendar to view my new event. Once I click on my new event, I can view all of the metadata for that event the same way I could for a document. I also have several actions that I can take on the event under the Actions menu. In this case, I'll select the Delete Item action. 
selecting this action will prompt me with a confirmation page. By selecting OK, the event will be deleted and I am giving a success message and a link back to the calendar. The way you can collaborate with other types of lists and libraries is very similar and consistent throughout the solution. Following the same general steps for the previous two examples, a user is able to work with announcements lists, task lists, link lists, discussion boards, blogs, surveys, etc. As a site owner, I am not limited to just contributing to lists and libraries. Several other functions that I'm able to accomplish using Discover 508 include changing user preferences to modify font sizes and user interface colors, managing users and groups, permissions, creating and deleting lists, libraries, sites, and searching SharePoint. With Discover 508, you'll find the interface to be more usable, consistent, and simplistic as compared to using SharePoint out of the box. The Discover 508 interface allows for all users to have access to the same information and for users who depend on assistive technology to collaborate in the same environment with the same ease as their coworkers.